So with the movement pretty much fully implemented at this stage, I think it's a good time to start looking at how we can interact with other things in the game that we have planned. So the enemies, the pickups, uh, they all kind of need us to have this concept of health and damage. So we can start by adding a health system to our player, which is what we'll be doing now. And then we'll look into how we can visualize this and get that to update based on what is being interacted with in the world. So to begin with, the health is a very simple concept. We're going to track this in floats just because I know that will be easier for us to implement that with the widget system a bit later. We could represent this as an integer value, especially if you had a health system where it's just like hearts or something, you'd be taking one heart away at a time that would be perfect as an int. But for now, I'm going to create two new variables of type float, one named default health and one named health. Next, we can compile this so that we have access to these two new variables. And what we want to do is I'm going to set default health to a nice round value of 100. So we'll start with 100 health and the health itself will leave to zero to begin with. Now on the construction script, you could do this on the event begin play as well. But generally things like this, people like to put in the construction script so that we know even before we begin playing, we're going to reset our current health to the maximum health that we can have or the default health. So we're going to get the default health by control dragging and set the health by alt dragging. And we'll quite simply set health to be default health. So now we know that again, we can do some tests if we want to unhook this, but in the main game, in the full game, if we're ever playing around with things here and we wanted to quickly test something between the widgets and set the health to a different value, we know that when we start playing or when this is updated in the constructor, that we will be setting our main health value back to the maximum we want that to have. To demonstrate this again, if we just press uh, on the begin play, we'll start debugging a lot, I think, with print strings just to make sure that things are making sense as we go through. So we can now just say that our health will be printed to the screen and we're starting with the 100 health. So that's nice and simple. That is our update to having health. We now have that concept. Of course, we next want to have the concept of damage. So damage is very simple. And in fact, we'll be using an event that comes pre-built with any actor class in the game. And that is a function named any damage. So we've got the event any damage we can see that the target is an actor and the great thing about this is we can kind of bypass a little bit of casting and knowing exactly what we are communicating with when it comes to damage systems we can literally just say if something has a function on it which is expecting to have damage handled call the any damage function pass in some information usually the damage amount and let that class work out and handle that logic that it's meant to be controlling. It's a very kind of object-oriented approach to programming. It decouples a lot of references, can keep your projects uh, tidier and easier to maintain, and also saves, in some cases, on performance as well. So what we're going to be doing, whenever a damage amount is passed in, we're going to set the current health to a new value. So we're going to be setting this, and we want this to be the current health. So we're going to get the current health minus a float, which will be the damage being passed in. So if we've got 100 health and 20 is passed in, we're going to pass that into our health value here and we would have 80 health. Now, again, we can do some debugging here. So it's nice to debug things as we go through. So I'm going to create a temporary input. Generally, I wouldn't create inputs in the event graph or even outside of the project settings. But because this is going to be temporary, I'll just remember to remove this later. And let's say we're going to press H. So we're going to find the key binding for H. Uh, h for health and whenever we press this we're going to call the apply any damage or apply damage and the reason this is called any damage if you're not familiar is we do have different types so we could bind this to the event point damage radial damage but uh, if we use any damage it means regardless of the type of damage being passed to us this will be fired off and take health away so we're just going to call the default apply damage function the actor that we want to damage is a bit strange but this is going to be ourself so remember, this is just a debug function here so that we can check our health system is working and the damage that we want to pass in, let's say that 20 units of damage that I mentioned a moment ago. And if we wanted to, if we wanted to check different things like who the damage was caused by or instigated by as well, these would be for things like if you had different offsets for types of damage, so uh, ballistic damage versus explosive damage and things like that. You could find out what the initial instigator was and whether you should pl apply the full amount of damage or like a modified version based on that. But again, we're just gonna be going for a very simple type of damage here, 20 flat units of damage. And what we want to do is whenever this is called, we're gonna do another print string and we will print the value of our current health. Now this is gonna have a few issues and we're gonna fix that in a moment and you'll see what those are as we're debugging. So we can press H and we can see that the damage is being called. We've got that down to zero, so the player should now be dead. 
If we press H again a few more times, we're going into minus values. So what we want to do to stop any weirdness like that happening where we could potentially kill the player after they've already been killed, we're going to clamp this to a certain value. So we'll pull from here, we'll clamp this to a float. We'll make sure that the minimum is zero. So we can now never go past that zero threshold and the maximum I'm gonna to set to be default health. So if we ever use this in a way where we, a very common thing you'll see is that health systems can basically be passing in negative damage. So you could pass in minus 20 damage. Obviously a minus, minus, and minus would be a positive. So you start adding on that way health to your player. We probably won't get into anything that confusing in this playlist. We're just gonna add a very simple add health function. There are issues that come with trying to use the damage system as a healing system as well. Some of the logic, especially if you start adding modifiers and trying to change things up, that can get a little bit confusing. But to account for that, we could make sure that we don't ever allow anything to pass a value to set us essentially cheating, I suppose, past our maximum default health value. And the final step, we want to add in the concept again of actually dying. So when we do get to this zero health value, uh, we're gonna check a few things for whether the player's died and create a new function ready for that. So we'll create a new Boolean value here and I'll call this one B is dead. So it can be useful to track the, the state of the player. It seems a bit obvious, but we want to again, avoid things like if the player is killed and then picks up health, do we allow them to revive? And if so, and they're damaged again, can they die a second time? So to avoid anything weird like that, we'll make sure that this defaults to uh, obviously false. We don't want them to start dead, but then if we get to a certain value, then we're gonna to want to set this to be true. So what we're doing is we'll do a branch check here and we're gonna say if the current health, rather than pulling from this pin, you could if you wanted to, I quite like having the extra variable here. We can control drag this in, it's no more expensive or anything. And then we can do a comparison. So if this is less than or equal to, and again, some people will find this a bit weird. Program this as you want. You can say less than if you want or equal to if you wanted to because we have this clamping value here, we should never get below zero. But again, this can change at any point. Another programmer might come in, find that they don't want this to be clamped. But of course, you still probably want anything less than zero to be dead. So accounting for things like that, I'm just going to say less than or equal to zero for the health is going to be classed as dead. So that isn't a programming oversight. It's just something I like to do because you never know how the pro project's going to go in the future. Like I said, you could work with someone else. They could come in and decide this clamp is irrelevant, not useful, or they want to use the clamp in a different way, in which case you could start going into negative numbers and still not have your player die. So if that's true, then we're going to say that this is a now dead player. And again, just for this added security, probably not something we need in such a simple project, but I'm going to say that we can only do this if the health is less than or equal to zero and we'll throw in an and Boolean check. And we're not already dead, so we're going to say is dead isn't equal to true. And an easier way to say that, sorry, is to just say is not true. So not Boolean. So if we're not dead already and the health is less than or equal to zero. So again, this is the kind of checks that you want to throw in just to make sure that you can have weird things. And I've seen it in some games where they haven't done these types of checks. The way that I'm planning on doing this, I think we'll have like a Mario or Sonic death animation. So when you die, you'll be launched into the air. You'll have the input removed from the player and you'll kind of animate out of the screen. And what I've seen in some games, because they haven't done a simple check like this, another projectile will hit them. Um, I'm guessing that they also didn't do a less than or equal to check or a clamping check. And what happens is that death animation keeps playing and they essentially keep re-entering the, uh, the death loop until they stop getting hit by something, even though they've technically already died that once. So it may seem a bit overkill, but these are just kind of nice, simple checks. And they add that safety that you're not going to have a buggy looking game where you can die multiple times in a single life. Um, and that's the worst thing as well, especially if you have a life based game, then that could start taking away multiple lives, even though you haven't even respawned at that stage. So if that's false, we don't need to do anything at all. Of course, if that's false, we're just still going to be running around the level doing fine. You could, if you wanted, this might be where if that is false, uh, you've taken some damage, you might want to play a knockback effect or a flashing animation, enter into some kind of invincibility time, that kind of thing can be, can be done here. What we do want to consider though, if that's true, we're gonna play a new function. So we'll add a new function here and we'll just call this one player died. And at the moment we don't have anything to really place in here. So I'm gonna add another print string. This will be its own topic a little bit later. But again, just so that we can test this is gonna be working. Uh, we'll do the player died function call off of this and we'll just play that print string. So coming in again, can press H until the health has gone all the way down. And we can see now the player has died and that's been tracked correctly. So we know that all of this is working as we wanted. And the important thing again, to make sure that those checks have been worthwhile, we can keep pressing H. 
and we're not getting multiple player died function calls. So we know that that's nice and safe. We're not able to keep entering some kind of infinite death loop. So that's pretty much as complex as our health system needs to be. We can come back and make some improvements later. I think the next thing is going to be adding some kind of visualization to that health system through the use of widgets. So this is probably all we need to do in here for now. We can close the player class out again, make sure you compile and save. At some point I seem to have had a leftover tile map just here, so I'm just gonna delete the old one and make sure that we have the correct one here, that's perfect. And that means that we're now good to go ahead and create our widget for the player health. So if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live. And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is, of course, your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.